Most people are only aware of integers, fractions, decimals, and percentages. That's because those are all you need to live a happy, healthy, normal life. But there's actually things called complex numbers, hypercomplex numbers, and meta numbers to make sure that you stay well clear of that. If you're above level three, then you're a nerd, and if you're above level six, then you officially have Gigabrain. Level one, integers. These are the numbers that we all know and love. Numbers like 69, ha 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 ha. These can be positive, negative, or zero, and it's often introduced to you using this annoying number line. Question time, if Johnny has three plus minus minus four minus plus minus plus minus six apples, and I take one minus plus minus two minus one minus minus one apples from him, how many apples is Johnny left with? The answer is minus two, and if you didn't get that in time, then you must be stupid. Level two, rational numbers. These are called rational, not because they're more reasonable and level-headed, even though they are, but because they can be represented by a fraction or ratio of two integers. So for example, one half can't be represented as a single integer, but it can be represented as a ratio of one out of two, or one over two. And it doesn't matter if you write it as a decimal number or a negative number, it's still rational. If every time I said the word ratio, all you could think about was people getting ratioed online for bad takes, then you officially have brain rot. <laughs> Level three, real numbers. This includes all the numbers on the real number line, including numbers like root two or pi, which is used to calculate the area or circumference of circles, or even numbers like Champanown's constant, which is just 0 0.12345678910111213, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to infinity. Pi is an irrational number since it cannot be represented as a fraction or ratio of two integers. Most people think the story ends here, but it doesn't. It gets so much worse. This is likely where you stop in high school because for most scientific calculations or real world applications, you're gonna be dealing with real numbers anyway since complex numbers rarely show up in real life. Level four, complex numbers. When you square root a prime number, you get an irrational number. But what about when you square root a negative number? Well, previously, mathematicians would just tell you to shut up and get back to doing your manual labor or whatever it is you do, you unintelligent peasant. Until one day in the 16th century, Italian mathematicians Gerolamo Cardano said, the square root of a minus one is I, a pizza, pizza, pizza. Later, Leonard Euler got his oily fingers all over it and made Euler's identity, which says that e to the i pi is equal to minus one. On this level, you'll learn how to use real numbers, imaginary numbers, and complex numbers, which can contain both a real and imaginary part. You might think it's all make-believe at this stage, but engineers actually use imaginary numbers to calculate voltage and current when they're out of phase. Level five, hypercomplex numbers. Just as complex numbers are a two-dimensional extension of the real numbers, quaternions are a four-dimensional extension of the imaginary numbers. The definition of i is that i squared equals minus one, but this extends to the other three dimensions too. i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals ijk equals minus one. Quaternions are actually used in quantum physics due to how well they can describe spin or polarization of an electron. You can also have octonions, which have eight imaginary units, and Sedenians, which have 16 imaginary units. Whilst quaternions have some use in 3D graphics, octonions aren't often used, so most mathematicians just don't bother with them. Each time you're giving up a, a magical power to get to the next stage, by the time you get to the octonians, you're exhausted. The when system, you say gi giving up a magical power? Well, like for example, it's very hard to think about the square root of negative one. So like, what does it mean for something squared to be negative one? Right. So that's like the complex numbers gave up that kind of sensibility. And then the complex numbers are at least commutative. A times B equals B times A but the quaternions don't have that property. So then you have a further property called associativity. So you're sort of, to, eat, to build the next system, you're giving up properties that m sort of make sense to us. And by the time you've gotten to the octonians, you've given everything away. There's no way you're gonna build the next system. Level six, abstract numbers. Two to the 10 to the one is this. Two to the 10 to the two is this. 2 to the 10 to the 3 is this, 2 to the 10 to the 4, then 5, and so on. This tends towards infinity, right? But if you look at the backside of the numbers, you'll notice that it's also tending towards the same digits. Have we just discovered the secret digits of infinity? No, we've discovered what's called a 10 attic number because we've got a random string of 10 digits stretching off to infinity. Fun fact, this number system actually contains some of the real numbers. If you have a 10 attic number, which is just 9999999999 going off to infinity, and you add one to it, then you end up with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is just zero. Meaning this 10 attic number is the same as minus one because when you add one to it, you get zero. So next time someone tells you e to the i pi is minus one, you can say no, actually, 
e to the i pi is 9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999